What's up, guys? What's up, guys? This your girl. This your girl. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back with another video. This one right here is a little different. You know, we all out here trying to grow. In this video, I'm coming in with you. Maybe it can help you, 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 me. It can help us all. You know what I'm saying? So, I came across the video. I, I'm, I'm all over like YouTube. I'm, I'm willing to learn. I don't know about you or you, but I know me. I'm here to learn and get it, get it right. So I was, I came across an interview that Mr. Beast did with, um, I don't know if a lot of y'all, um, it's a, uh, another site that's called Creator Inside. They're actually part of the YouTube they they actually part of the YouTube program. Well, I'm gonna say program, but part of YouTube. So anyway, I'm trying to like suggest this. So anyway, so they did an interview with Mr. Beast. And for y'all who don't know who Mr. Beast is, Mr. Beast is a a YouTuber, a a big YouTuber that has like over like what about 50 million subscribers. Um. He's not the biggest one, but he's uh, he's like in that that top, that top ten, top five, basically, I would say. So he, he you know, and a lot of people do know him. Whether you're a, a, a YouTube um, creator or person that just watches, you have a lot of people that just watch it to watch it. And then in the interview, you'll see where a lot of people, and they, well, in their comments, they they write in the comment that they. That they just watch the whole video just because it's who he is, just Mr. Beast. You know, he's the type of person, you know, his videos is a lot different. And um, he's been, I think he said he's been on the platform about seven years now or something like that. So, it's pretty interesting. You have to, like, the really, 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 really want to, like, kind of get in, know who he is, whatever. You have to, like, go to his channel and things like that and 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 do some of his videos, read some of his videos like that. But, like I said, so that's what this video is about. So, I want us to learn a little something from it. Hopefully, we can all walk away with a little bit of information because, he, you know, he all telling us certain things and I feel like, Maybe we can walk away with a little bit of knowledge that can help us help our channel grow because he do go into not too deep details, but he go into details and telling people like some of the things that we should be doing and what we should be concentrating on and, and we be concentrating on the wrong things and not the right thing. So, guys, let's just take a little listen to what he's saying and then we'll just come back. You're that professional oh. here, so uh, no problem there. Um, so I first, this is Mr. Beast, in case you, you're one of the few people on YouTube who doesn't know Mr. Beast. I hate when people and I'm Todd, I work on the product team for uh, the homepage and recommendations at YouTube, and so... Mm -hmm. Um, I first heard Mr. Beast um, last year at our North American Creator Summit. Now, I didn't actually meet you at the time, mm -hmm. but all the creators were running around there saying, oh my gosh, you got to talk to Mr. Beast. He's got this binder with all these charts. He's cracked the algorithm. And since I work on the algorithm, I just knew I had to talk to you. So fortunately, uh, mm -hmm. we got connected at Vid Summit, and you yeah. know, uh, now we're gonna like share your secrets um, on how to be a successful creator on YouTube. You've had quite the ride. So when did mm -hmm. you start uh, uploading to YouTube? Oh, we gotta do the boring stuff first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I started in um, on this channel or my channel, 2013. I've been doing it since I was 13 years old. And when I first started, I got 100,000 subscribers with an iPhone. And this is an iPhone 5 that recorded in 30 FPS, terrible quality. So, uh, as you guys know, like equipment's never an excuse because, like, people were constantly roasting me for the quality when I first blew up. I was like, I don't have money. I don't know what to do. But then, um, you know, I just reinvested every dollar I made, and over like the last, you know, whatever eight years, um, just slowly grew into whatever I do now. So, now that you've been on the platform about seven years. What do you? What would you say to creators that are getting started? I mean, do you think that it's still possible to start a channel on YouTube in 2020 <laughs> and be successful, or yeah. is it? It's uh, funny you saying that to me because I know you know the answer to it. Um, yes, it's obviously it is. And the thing is, though, 
you know, with the videos I was making when I was a smaller creator, I genuinely felt like, ah, you know, the algorithm hates me or this is unfair. But I just wasn't making content that deserved to get views. I don't know a nice way to put it. So I'm glad I'm talking about myself because anyone else I feel bad. But the video sucked. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you just look at the retention graphs. People would click off at the beginning. People didn't know sometimes what they're clicking on. And, like, if I wasn't retaining a viewer, just why would it make sense for you to promote it? Like, why would you promote a 10-minute video that people watch on average a minute and a half? It just doesn't make sense. So, um, honestly, I forgot the original question. What was it? Oh, yeah. I've seen people literally start a channel and within a month hit 100,000 subscribers. I've seen it. I personally know someone who had a channel with 100 subscribers. And me and my mom, boys, you know, other YouTubers that I feel like have a good understanding of how YouTube works. We just help them optimize the video. And I don't like to say the name of the channels because then I feel like... Okay, guys. So, what do you think? Like, like what's your thought? Are you all learning anything? Are y'all like getting any information? I know it's still early on in the video and we got a lot more to listen to, but like, I just need to know, are y'all y'all getting what I'm getting? Are y'all learning anything? I don't know. I, I mean, it's interesting to me. I, I watched it a couple of times before. That's what made me decide to do it. And I learned, and by the end of it, you listen to it a couple of times, you really pick, like you really start to, you start to see it and things. So. Let me just go ahead and let y'all finish watching this. Go ahead. ...as opportunities for improvement. A lot of it is just like, you can just tell when a video shouldn't go viral. At the beginning of the video, just tell, like literally the simplest thing, just tell them why they should watch it. You know, mm -hmm. if you're putting a million Orbeez in a pool, don't start the video with you shopping for, you know, your mom's birthday present. At the beginning of the video, just say, we're going to put a million Orbeez in this pool. And then that right there is, should, you know, be at least slightly sufficient. To help people know what to expect, maybe do a little preview at the front. Exactly. Yeah. So for most people, it's just that. They're just not hooking viewers and their, their video ideas just aren't that entertaining. Is there anything that you've seen in common to the creators that you've you've uh, seen to be successful? No, I mean, YouTube's so big. So do you think that there's any common misconceptions that creators have about YouTube? Well, a lot of people blame the algorithm, but typically you can, I mean, you can just look at the data and, and point to it. I mean... I don't. I don't really have to dig too deep into that one. Yeah. So you you you're known for digging into the the data. What it, what are some of the key metrics that you look at? Well, it's so funny having you ask me this because I should be asking you. But since I'm the one being interviewed, um, I mean, when you really boil it down to the people who are watching, just think about it. Like, what what do you think YouTube wants? Like, to me, I think YouTube just wants people to click on a video and watch it. Right. I mean. That's how they get their ad revenue. That's how they keep, you know, viewers happy and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure comments like stuff like that. But at the end of the day, they want you to click, watch the video, click, watch the video, and just do that as long as possible. So to me, what's important is click through rate, getting people to click on your video, and then average view duration, average view percentage, or just relative retention, and, you know, having them watch it. If people are clicking your video more than they click other videos and they're watching it longer than they watch other videos, I, you know, I just... As simplistic as that is, that's like what YouTube wants, and I think that's how you just, you know, be successful. Yeah, so I think you hit hit it right on in terms of uh, what we look at. Um, mm -hmm. We're our goals with the algorithm are to try to find view find videos each viewer is gonna, mm -hmm. um, you know, engage with. But then um, another thing that we've been getting more into uh, is what we call satisfaction, and so mm -hmm. this is. This is kind of recognizing the fact that yes, we optimize and try to, you know, have watch time as one of the key metrics we look at. Yeah. But we also know that not all watch time is equally valuable to mm -hmm. the person watching. You know, you can spend, you know, 15 minutes watching something and then feel like, meh, I just kind of wasted my time. I should have, you know, gone to bed earlier or did something else. Yeah. Or maybe it was like really inspiring and and, and changes your life somehow. And we want to mm -hmm. be able to capture that difference. And so the way we do that is with uh, surveys. Mm -hmm. so I we, knew you were about to say that. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I would add that to what you're saying beyond mm -hmm. like clicking on the video and then watching as much as possible. We also want, you know, if we randomly survey a viewer after they've watched, mm -hmm. um, what would they say? Would they say this is one of the best videos I've ever watched on YouTube or just kind of average? Um, so I, I'd encourage creators to think about what's going to be satisfying, not mm -hmm. just take the most time. So why don't you tell us a little bit about like your creative process? How does it all start with mm -hmm. the Mr. Beast video? 
Well, obviously everything starts with an idea. And for me, um, I like to make my videos a little longer. So that's a big part of All right, guys. So like what like what do y'all think like like I'm like like I said I watched it I had to like really go back and watch this like twice like to really get like so I can really like grab it and let it sink in and 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 I really learned some things that I'm gonna try going forward on my um like on my next videos and things like that so I mean I hope you guys like really like like learning something of it like this. I mean, we're not going to just say, oh, don't, like, oh, don't just listen to him. This man is, have over 50, like, 50 million subscribers. So, apparently, he know what he's talking about. Like, it's crazy, like, guys. And, and he said, like, I don't know if you, like, he said that he, he liked watching, um, he's not all about into, like, like, watching a lot of the big YouTubers. He liked watching small channels. To see like what we're doing, like like how are we um creating our videos and 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 the thumbnails? Like you gotta like really listen to what he say, guys. You gotta really listen. And like he said, you know, sometimes you gotta he really sit back and think for like over an hour or a day, like not an hour, a day. Sometimes two days just on the idea of what his video going to be, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I might, oh, you know what, boom, and maybe a couple of hours. And sometimes I think about it, and then I debate, like, yeah, it might take a day, then, yeah. But for the foremost, guys, for me, myself, I don't I don't really go too into, like, a day or two days really thinking about it and, and all of that. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm going to keep it 100 like yeah so we gotta let's just let's just come on we're gonna finish listening to him we're gonna finish listening to him all right go ahead go ahead go ahead mr beast finish go ahead go ahead school us let us know what's going on i'm gonna just one's 10 grand obviously people are gonna watch the end because they want to see who won the money so have you could apply that to your videos if somehow you could have a payoff at the end then you know more people are gonna watch the end just to see what happened and just obviously don't cut out all dull moments, try not to over explain things. My camera just sits on me and I'm just talking for 20 seconds. It doesn't hold retention as well as, you know, maybe me talking and other footage popping up. There's things like that if you just, you know, there's literally in your analytics, and most of you probably know this, audience retention. You can see where people click off. Just literally go through your last 50 videos, write down where everyone clicked off, and then just don't do those things again. How do you uh, keep things fresh and engaging over time? You uploaded, a, what, 100 yeah. videos last year? Somewhere uh, yeah. probably lower, probably like 70 to 80. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I'm not perfect, so I don't do a great job of it. But, you know, I like to end a series or a challenge on a high note. Like, you can just kind of tell when people are getting a little tired of it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I just gave away a million dollars, so let's take hand off of it. So now if I do... Last to do Blake wins 10 grand. It's just not really the same effect. But some, I'm still going to maybe occasionally do it. But it's just like to keep things fresh, just again, it's hard because so many of them are different. Like if they're a Fortnite creator, you know, I'm not trying to tell them to switch games every month because then uh, that might kill their career. But for me, me, I just like to, you know, do stop. Don't milk a series too hard. You know what I mean? Keep it fresh and always try to introduce things here and there. And then if it if it works well, take it and run with it for a little bit and introduce something else new. Because if I just did last three videos nonstop for the next three years, like, no one would watch me. Everyone would be like, we've seen it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you mentioned to me that you actually spend a lot of your time on brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ideas. So uh, is that, <laughs> like, a regular thing? Yeah, or? at the end of the day, like... You, the idea is a big part of the video, you know, not even just from clicking it, but whether or not people watch it, you know, if you're spending 24 hours in a corner, that's just not as entertaining as spending 24 hours in a jail cell. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like, the only difference there is the idea. It's not the content. It's, like, it's what you formulated beforehand. So, yeah, like, I like to spend an hour a day. You know, it's, it's dwindled recently. We, we have a lot of ideas. But if you spend an hour a day thinking of ideas, it's pretty hard to not expect your channel to do better, you know. Um, unless you're just not executing them properly, but... All right, so you're uh, uploading a lot of videos. How um, 
how do you keep from burning out? Like, if there's something that, like, I genuinely just don't want to get out of bed and do, that's a problem. And the end of the day, it's just keeping it enjoyable. So I have Chris and Chandler, if you've seen my videos, mm -hmm. they're really fun to be around. So, like, you know, spending 12, 24 hours in a desert by myself would be miserable. But spending 24 hours with my boys and just hanging out and stuff like that makes it so much more fun. So for me, I, dude, this might not apply to, like, 90% of you, but for me, creating an environment that's fun that I get excited for and then, you know, outsourcing things that just make me not want to get out of bed. I don't know a different way to phrase it. That's what has helped, you know, long term make me stay motivated. So two years ago is when I got brought Chris on and finally got a little bit of help. But for like the first six, seven years, it was all me. I, if we are getting a little deep, it was it was pretty hard. Like, because like all throughout high school, people would tell me I was too obsessed and told me like you shouldn't spend so much time on this. My mom and I fought constantly because like I just wanted to make videos instead of doing schoolwork. And when I dropped out of college, she kicked me out. You know, my mom's like really sweet and she cares about me, but she's like, go to college or leave. And I was like, I guess I have to leave. So it was just, it was a lot of ups and downs and every part of the way to me, cause I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. I just, I couldn't see a life where I wasn't a YouTuber. It was either I'm a YouTuber and happy or I'm sad. That was, those are like the only two outcomes. So I just kept making videos and persevering. And a big thing is I, I um, tried to connect with other YouTubers because a lot of what I know and what I've gone over, I wouldn't know without other YouTubers. So I, I would constantly spam like a dozen YouTubers a day. And like the first few people that I finally got in contact with, I learned so much off of and they helped me understand how to make an entertaining video and stuff like that. Cause it was, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that mine? <laughs> Leave that in. So how do you think about uh Mr. Beast and your channel now as a business has that shifted in a big way it's a lot of what we're doing now if you really all right guys please tell me y'all got something out of this Mr. Beast he gave he dropped some jewels on us y'all he dropped some jewels he, he gave us some jewels I don't know about y'all but I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited he dropped some jewels on this guys you know what I'm saying like you know, just just listen, like follow that advice, y'all. I, I mean, he dropped some jewels on us today. He he definitely did, God. He definitely did. So I hope y'all learned something out of it, cause I did. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna try a little something. The things that he said, try to do a little change up and things like that, because your girl, your girl is trying to go. And you heard what he said, like really? Think about it. A person only had like a hundred, what do you say, a hundred subs or something like that, but got like a million views? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm excited to, to try to switch up and to do something. I hope y'all guys really appreciate it that your girl brought this video to light for us so we can all grow together. Together. I'm excited, guys. I'm excited. As you can tell, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. But, yeah, I just had to bring this to show y'all. And I really, really hope y'all enjoyed this, guys. So, with further to do, I'm going to just let it play out. And, like I said, guys, let's go together. Let's take a little bit of advice on someone that's that's that that already grew and is that that took the time to really give us a little bit of insight of how to um grow our channel more and get us where we need to be but thank you mr beast thank you thank you thank you for giving taking the time out to share this with us like i appreciate it Guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel already. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, okay, I forgive you. But definitely make sure you like this video and leave a comment down below. At least that, guys. Until the next video, your girl love you. But we're going to end this off with the great worries of Mr. Beast. If you spend an hour a day thinking of ideas, it's pretty hard to not expect your channel to do better. You know, um... Unless you're just not executing them properly, but it was after. Yeah, it was like, I was like literally like, 
I gotta make this work. So I was like, I was doing everything I could, like nonstop. <laughs> Chances are, like, to have a video go viral, you need, people need to watch it for a really long time and high percentage need to click on it. So yes. it sounds like people just don't watch it's it. It's long watch time and that's true, you're right. It's really just a formula of, of, of clicking and, and yeah, watch watching. Yeah, I mean, like, people overcomplicate the algorithm. Like, if people click on your video and watch your video, they don't care about comments or likes. None of that matters. They no, just no, want no. you to click and watch. Yeah, yeah that's... It's, it's funny because people tell me, oh, well, there's an algorithm shift two months ago and this and that. I'm like, what are you going on about? You know, mm. like, the core principles have been the same for, like, the last six years. Mm. Yeah, and you got to work smarter, not harder. I mean, some people... I, I say this analogy a lot, but since we're on the topic, I think for most smaller channels, like if they're pulling a thousand views a video and they upload a video every day for a hundred days, they'll pull a hundred thousand views. But I, I would recommend you just think of a really good idea, one that people genuinely want to watch.